Hi, I'm Rachel here with my cat Leia, and I'm starting another video with a correction of sorts. In the last one, I assumed that the photographer mentioned in The Photographer's Wife might be Jewish, but nope, he's Arab. I've started reading this book, which largely takes place in 1920 Jerusalem, and it's like folding the curtain back from my usual spot. I've read a lot of the Jewish experience, but not so much of the English and the Arab, so it's interesting. Anywho, on to another video where I might make more mistakes about plots and storylines of books. My March book haul! I haven't started reading most of these yet, but I'm looking forward to it. I didn't buy any books in February, and most of these were free or cheap, except for two exceptions at the end. That makes it okay, doesn't it? Well, my shelves are thickening. Anywho, I wanted to start with this book because I need to give a huge thanks to Steve Donahue for sending it to me. It's an ARC of The Chalk Artist by one of my favorite authors, Allegra Goodman. This was one of my most anticipated releases of the year, and it's not out till June. I have a whole other video out on Goodman's earlier books. I love what she does with characters. She dives into their heads and you get to know them so intricately through their thoughts. They're just so fully realized. She often probes the minute details of closed communities, like members of a small research lab in her novel Intuition, or a 1970s Jewish Hasidic enclave in Catterskill Falls. She also likes to explore and juxtapose the worlds of academics and artists with the tech-savvy and future thinkers, which I think is the case here. I'm waiting a little closer till its release date to read this one, but should I? Yep. Next, I have to talk about LitHub. I won two giveaways this month, which has me thinking, sheesh, do people not take advantage of LitHub anymore? Do I need to stop listening to Rebecca and Liberty's suggestions on their podcast, All the Books? That'll be hard. But I have these two books, thanks in part to them. First is Everything Belongs to Us by Eugen Grace Warrens. I seem to be continuing with my trend of winning novels by Korean-American authors. This story takes place in South Korea in 1978 and deals with two childhood friends from two very different socioeconomic backgrounds. The rich one joins an underground movement and the poor one works tirelessly to change her family's circumstances. Then enter a charismatic stranger. So this seems to be the promise of character drama plus a look at South Korea's political climate under an authoritarian regime. This second book is The Beast is an Animal by Petternell von Arsdale. It's unlike anything that I usually pick up. It involves a fantastical fairy tale-like world of villages in the woods with human social repression and soul leaders and magical powers. I've kind of been mulling over a similar story idea in my head, so I'm using this as research of a sort, and I'm also hoping this will be atmospheric and evocative. I seem to be catless now, alas, but I guess I'll go on. I bought Stations West by Allison Amend from a Barnes & Noble Marketplace seller. I read it as part of my Sammy Roar 2011 reads. I plan to have that review video up soon along with two other novels. This one involves Jewish immigrants in the 19th century Midwest making a name for themselves along with Native Americans and others. The characters were interesting and the plot always kept me wanting more. Plus, we got to see the rise of Oklahoma. I enjoyed this book, and I'll have more to say about it in my upcoming video. Then, one weekend, I dragged my dad to a library book sale, and he happened to buy two books for me. I don't feel too bad. They total to under $5. This is The Love Affairs of Nathaniel P. by Adele Waldman. It sounds a little pretentious, but I have a thing about checking out contemporary female Jewish novelists. I'll read from the back. Nate Piven is a rising star in Brooklyn's literary scene. After several lean and striving years, he has his pick of both magazine assignments and women. Juliet, the hotshot business reporter, Alyssa, his gorgeous ex-girlfriend, now friend, and Hannah, almost universally regarded as nice and smart or smart and nice, and who holds her own in conversation with his friends. But when one relationship grows more serious, Nate is forced to consider what it is he really wants. In this 21st century literary world, Wit and conversation are not all dead. Is romance? Novelist Adele Waldman plunges into the psyche of modern man who thinks himself as beyond superficial judgment, yet constantly struggles with his own anxious anxiety, and who is drawn to women and yet has a habit of letting them down. With tough-minded intelligence and dry good humor, the love affairs of Nathaniel P. is an absorbing tale of one young man's search for happiness. 
and his inside look and how he really thinks about women, sex, and love. So yeah, I think I might have to take him to task a little, but in bright news, my companion is back! <laughs> I was thinking I'd lost her for good in this video. <laughs> this second book is The Girls by Emma Klein, which reached critical acclaim in the literary world last year. It's the story, sort of vaguely based on the Manson family, I believe, which follows female teenage characters into a dangerous cult. I've heard some mixed reviews, but most of the people who didn't seem to like this book are men, and most who do are women. My tastes tend to align more closely with my own gender, I think. I guess I'll find out. This might be my most head desky purchase. It's A Land Twice Promised by Noah Baum. I bought it quickly from local bookstore Politics and Prose so that I could get it signed at the DC Jewish Book Festival. But because of some stupid snowstorm that didn't even shut down my workplace, of course this event was canceled and moved. Ugh. Well, I guess I have to show my love for politics and prose sometimes, and I'm still very interested in this book. It's a memoir told by a Jewish Israeli woman about her friendship with a Palestinian Christian. Baum first wrote a storytelling performance about this transformative experience, and then this. She'll be speaking at my local Jewish community center on April 27th, and I still can't wait. And finally, I bought The Wanderers by Meg Howry from Second Story Bookshop. This was my first time in this bookshop where my writing group held a big meet and greet reception last week. I always tend to want to buy one book from each new bookstore that I visit, you know, to single-handedly save publishing. And then my book leader handed out $5 gift cards. It was like a sign. Plus, this book was also on my anticipated reads video. It's been compared to Stations Eleven, which I love, and The Martian. It's about a group of astronauts preparing for their Mars mission and going through family drama. I've heard good things. Sheesh, now the only book from my anticipated reads list that I don't own is the one from the indie publisher that I most want to support. I might have to rectify that soon. That's about it for me now. Please feel free to share your thoughts on any of these books or any of your own recent acquisitions. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.